public ministry of Jesus began with his baptism. And that baptism, as St. John would attest, is the baptism of the Holy Spirit and fire. That means uh, the Holy Spirit, the third person of the Trinity, is with Jesus. And fire means power. The power, the authority from God the Father. So this shows that Jesus is of divine nature. And we can see that in his public ministry. So that when he went out publicly, he started three ministries. First is healing. Second is exercising, which is casting out devils. And third is preaching. Preaching about the good news of the heaven, he heavenly kingdom. The kingdom of God, of God is close at hand. And in the gospel that uh, presented today, we see Jesus doing the healing ministry, curing all forms of diseases and illness. The gospel tells us that uh, Jesus has healed no less than 40 times. And in those healing, he did miraculous ways. He healed miraculously. What is miracle? Miracle is an extraordinary event that is made by God. Some, an event that happens outside the ordinary course of nature. For instance, when you throw the ball and it goes up, it stays up there, it's a miracle. Especially, we see that there is no pull of gravity. How come that the ball would not pull down when in fact there should be a gravitational force? If a person is healed instantly, there's divine intervention. There's miracle, and Jesus would do that. In fact, uh, the Vatican has uh, re many reports of miracles, and they have to send scientists, moralists, in order to assess, to confirm if miracles do happen. Because in the beatification and canonization of saints, the Vatican need miracle for those especially for, for intercession of saints, for those people who are healed. And Jesus would do these miracles. So that uh, one, one of the miracles that uh, he has done is the healing of Peter's mother-in-law. And we, see, we saw that in the gospel. After they have been to the synagogue, they went to the house perhaps for dinner. And usually, it is women who would prepare for food. Now, because Peter was the head of the apostle, perhaps he has invited Jesus and the rest of the apostles to come eat and dine with us. My mother-in-law is preparing. But the mother-in-law of Peter was sick with high fever. And Jesus, knowing that she was sick, went to her, took her by the hand, and help her up. And the fever left her, and she began to wait on them. So this is what we have read in the gospel. She was healed instantly. We do not know what kind of fever, what kind of illness she had. It could be a kind of COVID symptom or a flu symptom, but she was healed by the power of Jesus. She was healed by her faith, she was healed by the power of God. Because miracle happens because of God's intervention. And Jesus is one with God the Father. We are all baptized Christians. We're Catholics and Christians. And we, have, we are being called to a kind of ministry in the likeness of Christ. Because in our baptism, we share in the priestly, prophetic, and kingly function of 
our Lord Jesus. Remember, in the Epiphany, the Magi has seen in Jesus the three, in the three gifts, the three roles that Jesus would do in this world, in his mission in the world, and for us. The same mission that is entrusted to us as Christians through our baptism. We, perhaps we can be instruments of healing for others also. We may not be healers, but we can be instruments of God in order to heal other people. Maybe by your touch, you do not know who has the charisma, who has the power. Of course, there are many forms of healing because there is the medical healing, science, but there's also faith healing, and we believe in faith. It is our faith that heals, our faith in God, because it is God who heals us. And that's the reason why there are some people who go to this kind of healing, faith healing, herbal healing with faith. So that uh, we have to realize that we were anointed in our baptism with the oil of holy chrism. And what is the significance of that chrism of salvation? We were anointed. As we were baptized, we become sons and daughters of God, and we have that mission to be instruments of salvation for others, to preach the good news for others, to heal others, or to be an instrument of healing for others. So that just like Samuel, who was considered as a prophet by the Old Testament people and by the Israelites, we have to say to the Lord, speak, Lord, your servant is listening. And this is what Samuel is known for with his words, speak, Lord, your servant is listening. Perhaps uh, in our ministry, whatever we do in the church for the people, to any relatives, let us give our trust and faith in the Lord because who knows? We have the charisma, we have the gifts, God has given us certain talents so that we can be an instrument of salvation and healing for others. Speak, Lord. Here I am, Lord, your servant is listening.